stay tuned and we'll start your intro. To the Drawing Board Podcast, a powerful, thought-provoking discussion where we talk about family, relationships, ministry, community, and career. Let's see what exciting guests we have on our show today. Great afternoon, great evening. This is Andre Ebron, the founder and the host of the Drawing Board Podcast, the author of the Drawing Board, the book, and the host of the Drawing Board Experience, our annual conference. It is a powerful, thought-provoking testimonial uh, conversation and conference that challenges the listener to examine their life and reimagine the possibilities. Now, we're almost on our, our year show, and so unlike anything we've ever done, and I'm getting that ready to bring you some information that's going to radically change your business and also the way that you communicate about your brand. Tonight, we have the pleasure and the honor of having Mr. Robert Courtney on the show. Welcome, sir. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. And uh, I've been following you. I've been following the work that you're doing. Uh, I think that is is awesome and great. Every video that I'm hearing, I got, I got, I got. You know, so I'm <laughs> I definitely love it. yeah. The, the branding is working. It is working. It's working, and uh, just communicating and seeing you as a father and a husband and an entrepreneur, uh, and the way you're able to keep it fresh, the way you're able to keep it relatable, Thank you. and in your video, man, the way you talk about. Um, you know, being able to communicate about the things you do on a daily basis right. and how that causes people to connect and build. 100%. So, yeah, absolutely. So, man, let's build, right? Yeah, yeah, let, no yeah, doubt, let's no doubt. Build. So I want to let the audience know a little bit about you. Robert Courtney is an innovator of business and a builder of community through, let me get this together. I'm sitting here <laughs> trying to, I'm zooming in and out, all right? <laughs> But the basis of it, and I'm going to read it. I'm just waiting for my screen to clear up. Android is still one of the best phones out there. I'm going to stick <laughs> with that. All right. So he's a builder of community through digital strategies. Robert has participated in close to 100 engagements, speaking on the topics of organic social media growth, personal branding, entrepreneurship, and more. Since 2007, he has assisted in almost 80 companies and individuals and strategies that have contributed to business success. Now, I'm always, listen, I love people that can bring it and it, those leads translate and convert into business. That, Absolutely. That's, that's where it's at. Those conversion rates have to be high. You like, you that's, like that conversions. Is, I like conversions. <laughs> Absolutely. So okay. thank yous are great, but they don't work in the gas right, tank, right? right so, that's true. Yeah. So he currently oversees Robert Courtney & Associates, a full-service digital marketing agency based in Metro Detroit. Robert and his team cover a diverse range of industries, including fashion, hospitality, automotive, real estate, beauty, and more. Individ individuals usually leave encounters with Robert feeling refreshed and motivated about what they can do if they A-T-A-C-C. Now, we're going to have to talk about, about that to say, acronym. You're probably wondering yeah. what in the world does ATACC stand for? Yes, sir. Absolutely. ATACC -A stands for Audience, Trust, Attention, Content, and Consistency. Okay. And so we use it as an acronym because, like, that last sentence is really, honestly, probably what I'm most about. And that's just motivating, inspiring. And, you know, so with that attack, it's like, you know, if you're not attacking this like if you're not treating this like a competitive sport like every single time you wake up if you're not bringing that type of energy to the table then you have a tough go especially when it comes to entrepreneurship when it comes to building any type of business you know you have to be almost competitively motivated you know to get up and get after it you know so we try to bring that enthusiasm and we came up with that attack acronym because we feel that's the fundamentals, that's the basics of every successful branding strategy or marketing campaign. If you're not building audience, if you're not um, winning people's trust, if you're not figuring out a way to present your content um, to grab people's attention, if you're not consistently putting that content out there, then you really, you're, you're gonna be playing behind the eight ball. And then um, on top of that, it's like the more consistent you are, and doing those things, you know, that gives you a better chance at winning. Absolutely. So when we talk about motivation, like who 
who who motivates you the most? You know what? That's an interesting question that I actually get a lot. And I mean, I, the person that motivates me more than anybody else or that motivated me more than anybody else was my dad. Like 100 yes, percent. Um, I feel like that's where my motor come from. I feel like my approach to um, my daily activities, watching him do it for 30 plus years, 4 a.m. until 7, 8 p.m. at night, sleep for a couple hours and then get right back to it. He worked for General Motors for 25, 30 years of his life. Um, and so I think that's where my work ethic and approach came from and, and my true deep-seated motivation. But then just in terms of public figures and people that um, other people know, and I have five people that I feel make up my personality, okay. which I put a lot of thought into. Michael Jordan. Okay. Kobe Bryant. Yes. Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay. Jay-Z. And World Wide West. Okay. I feel like those five people in some aspect of their personality um, are people that I draw from, um, are people that I feel I've utilized their blueprints in a lot of different ways. Um, and obviously there's many others that, that, you know, I find, you know, that bring me motivation, people that I listen to, podcasts I listen to and things like that. But just in terms of overall personality traits, I feel like those individuals make up a lot of the things I feel motivate me. So it makes sense to me now when I when I got the um, uh, your content, your information, when I was going over it, I saw that you had those five listed in. Mm -hmm. I was like, OK, I get these are like, you know, apex players. They right. are the best at what they do. Right. Uh, they but there are certain traits about you know, each about one. each individual that I mentioned that I really resonate with. And, you know, they're not just because these are huge celebrities. Right. You know, like Michael Jordan, his his work ethic was unlike anything we've ever seen. His competitive um, drive was like anything we've ever seen. World Wide West, his ability to be e extremely successful, yet fly under the radar. Like right now, you can be next to him in the grocery store and not even know it's him. Nobody knows, you know, right. which to me was incredible, you know. And then Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, I just feel like we, the things he say is the things that I would say. You know, I just feel like we interpret things very similar, which I'm sure a lot of people do. He's a very, he has a very human way about um, his approach and his thought process on certain aspects of life. Then obviously Kobe Bryant, like he's, he's to me, and I watch a lot of different sports. To me, he's the hardest working. You know, like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant were both basketball players. I feel like the game came naturally to Michael Jordan. Right. He didn't have to work very hard. Like, he worked hard, but the way he played seemed effortlessly. Um, Kobe is on record for running five, six miles, then – warming up, then actually doing his practice and then playing the game and then practicing and shooting more after the game is over. He was just tirelessly working at his craft to be the best in the world, you know. So all those different individuals, I felt there's a relatable characteristic that I really, really identify with. Right. And as I listen to you um, and how you identify with them, what I also love about the people that you shared is that they've taken that same edge to whatever industry that they're a part of, right? Yes, yes. And so the fact that you are able to help people craft narratives, stay motivated, be consistent across multiple industries right. is kind of watching all of those five people yep. at play, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, man, when you shared about how your dad motivates you, like these are some hallmarks. And what I love is about what you shared, and I think we all can learn from, is that it's, it's great to be motivated by what a person does, mm -hmm. but to be committed to what allows them to be excellent, right? Yes, And so 100%. we have to be, I was, it was a quote today, and it said, motivation is what keeps you, what well, motivation is what gets you started, but commitment is what keeps you going, yeah, right? I couldn't agree more. You know, and my dad, you know, he, he didn't have the business savvy, you know, he, he was never shown or instructed what it, what entrepreneurship was about you know so he couldn't he couldn't transfer that type of information like he just he didn't know but those principles that he displayed every single day taking care of the family my mom never worked um my dad was very smart about his money and those principles to me they they transcend 
whether you're working for an employer, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're playing sports, whether you're into your faith, whatever it is, those principles are principles that I feel can be used across the board, which those principles that I named from those players, I feel those are principles that can transcend any business, any industry. And you think about even with social media, like social media is just a tool. You know, it's a tool that's being used today. You know, that tool was radio at one point. That tool was television. Like, that tool constantly changes. That attack principle and those principles that those players um, and those individuals bring to the table, I think those are principles that are timeless, and they, you know, they'll always be things that we need to always think about. I, I totally agree. When I'm listening to you, I immediately go to, like, how you generate profiles for whoever your personal customer is, right? Correct. So those principles that you shared, I literally, like, see a character, right? Because that's, that's what we're talking about, right? Like, yep. the character of your business, yep. the character an av- of... An avatar. Yeah. So, yep. Yep. I mean, you speaking words that I, you know... <laughs> so, so tell me again, what was that? Yeah, so, you know, avatar, we... we oh, okay. Yeah, avatar, we, we help clients all the time customize the individual that they're speaking to. Like, when I think of a client... I literally can picture his face. I know how much money he probably generates, you know, whether he's a family man, like all these different things, because when you're crafting your message, you want to craft it as if you're talking to an actual person that represents the audience, you know? So um, you're saying customer profiles and that our turn for that is we build an avatar for the client so that they can visualize who it is we're crafting this message to. And yeah, update me, please. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, because um, you know that that uh, cross generational gap in mm-hmm. language and, and how even in spending and how those things happen. Right. Like, how are you? Like, because we have an audience of like we have some Gen Xers, mm-hmm. we have some millennials, and I myself am like an older millennial, right? Yeah. So I fall, you know, well, well, I'm right we, there yeah, with we you. Fall yeah, right we're, in that we're gap, right in the so, same area probably. Like, yeah, absolutely. So I'm a young, you know, 36 turning 37 in oh, I'm December. older than you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, so. Yeah, you're a young man. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> but thinking about that, man, because what I'm finding, and I'm sure you're finding, is that a lot of people uh, desire to be business owners mm-hmm. and be entrepreneurs but it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse, like, hey, yeah. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And now, so speak to them, Rob. Like, tell them, like, okay, if you are at stage one or stage 100, what are some key components in getting your digital strategy together? Well, you know, first of all, let me say that, you know, we would probably have an extensive conversation about what qualifies you to be an entrepreneur, what qualifies you to be a business owner. And to me, there's not very many prerequisites anymore. Once upon a time, I felt like, you know, you had to have a lot of moving parts working together in order to put yourself in position to step out. Um, Nowadays, technology has really leveled the playing field, you know, in terms of who would be capable of making Um, a legitimate leap or a realistic leap, I guess you could say, in terms of starting a a business. The biggest and most important thing is, do you love and are you passionate about the thing that you're thinking about doing? Like, how bad do you want to do that thing? I feel like that's the number one question, because if you're truly passionate about it and you love it like you love a wife, like you love a daughter, like it literally needs to be a bit like a baby to you. If you love it on that level, then you'll make it happen. Like you're going to go above and beyond. You're going to push through the adversity and push through the challenges and you're going to make it happen. Um, With that being said, the, the other thing is if you have something that you're starting and you are working, say, a part time or full time job, and this is kind of like an extra thing, we now have the ability to simultaneously do both. You don't have to no longer put your full-time thing aside or give half of your energy to your full thing so that you can put the other half of your energy into the other thing. With technology, you could literally lay in the bed and create opportunities for yourself. You know, you can um, have automation tools set up working for you while you're working your regular job. Um, And so I think people don't really think through the process of 
what they're about to do and how they're going to launch and market that thing. So when talking to me, the conversation is always about, A, if you can't figure out a way to have at least six months of um, budget to where you can hire somebody like me to help you through a digital strategy, then you're probably not in a position to hire somebody. Do it yourself alongside of the other thing that the other thing that you're doing. And then when you get to a position to where you have at least that, then maybe move to where you're going to bring in, say, a third party. Other than that, utilize all the free tools like you utilize your your social media channels, um, your personal networks, and then at least create um, some type of foundation. And then once the foundation is, is in place, then start thinking about some of the other things you can bring in. Yeah, that's that's excellent because um, that's how I'll be honest. That's how Ebron and Associates. That's how it got started. Mm-hmm. So it was more or less like spaghetti against the wall. Yep. Figure out what stuck, and then from that point begin to move. So right. Well, the, I think the fear not to cut you off. I think no, the good. fear is always the unknown. You know, people are scared because they've never done it before. You know, and so even with me my back was against the wall. I had I got forced into entrepreneurship. It was like one day working a great job, next day I don't have a job. So do I want to go put myself in a position to be let go from a job again? I'm no, never again. So this is my only option now. You know, so that's not that scenario doesn't happen as much. I feel like, you know, nowadays people can kind of plan and if you do get fired or let go, a lot of times you already had something that was in the works or getting ready to start and then you can easily transition into that thing and then the hope is that you can generate revenue to replace it, whatever it is that you were doing. But, um, you know, my situation and having your back against the wall where there's no other options, right. I don't, I think that's, you know, that's old news. Like, you don't have to put yourself in that position. So that should relieve some of that fear. Like, that fear shouldn't be as great as it is. But the other thing is a lot of people are in this mentality of I'm expecting to be paid on Friday or I'm expecting to get a paycheck on the 15th or on the 1st. And that's probably a bigger thing to break than the actual um, concept of creating a business that's going to make money for you. Yes, sir. You know. So let's talk about that because you made a post on Facebook that, man, I saw a lot of people were grasping inspiration, motivation, and principle, right? Okay. Or they will hustle, adapt, and process, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you put down, you're standing next to your new vehicle. Yeah. And you gave you gave the the conversation was, hey, I remember when I had this. Yeah, the story. I lost it all. You yeah. gave the story. Yeah. And then uh, you talk about how you've been able to successfully now uh, just regain or recoup those things that you lost in the process. Right? right. Right. So yeah, man, walk us through that because I know when you were saying. Hey man, my back was against the wall, mm-hmm. but I'm looking at this fresh lineup you got. Here, so <laughs> I, know, I know at one time you were a barber. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, just when people see you, like they'll see you this coming Thursday, I'll right. be there right. uh, at Trust at 7:30 to see you. Man, you have a you have a litany of people that will be there that are experts in their field. Right. Eric Thomas. Right. Uh, Brittany B. Yeah. You know? yep, so yep, yeah. Yep. Tom Brittany Lawrence. Brown. Yeah. Yep. Tom Lawrence. Yeah. I, I I got the VIP package, so I'll be nice. there to get the book. You nice. Feel me? So, nice. Carlos yeah. Gill. Car- yeah, the end so, of marketing. Absolutely. So, but like when they see you on Thursday, a lot of people may not get the story of when you know you lost the vehicle. So right. Like, walk right. Walk us through that, brother. Yeah. So, you know that story. Um, for those that, that didn't read it, the, the context of that is I put up a post about a new vehicle that I just purchased. And I wanted to be very clear that the post wasn't about the vehicle. You know, right. the post wasn't about this brand new car. It was really I hope for the post to serve as inspiration for individuals who aspire for whatever their objectives are, you know, and whatever their their goals are, you know. So um, we had an interesting conversation, not to get off subject, but we had an interesting conversation a couple of days ago. And the conversation was about, like, how do you define success? And my answer to that was success is different for every individual. For me, I actually reached success three, four years ago. Like, when I was able to wake up in the morning and feel at ease, not feel the pressure of bills, not feel the pressure of not worrying where my next dollar was coming from and still being able to to decide what I did with the day. That that was that was success to me. You know, like I always just wanted flexibility and controlling my day. 
Like, do I want to go and work 12 hours? Do I want to go work one hour? Do I not want to work at all? Do I want to fly to L.A.? Like, that flexibility was literally when I was as young as your son. Those are the things. I don't want to go to school today, but I have to go to school, and I don't have any control over that. You know, I don't want to go work at Burger King, but I have to go to work at Burger King, and I don't have any. So from a little kid, I dreamed of waking up and not having to do anything for anybody, only what I wanted to do, right? So so in hindsight, as I, as I thought through, you know, my experiences, th- that caption was a little bit about being under someone's control, Buckeye Pipeline, who let me go for no apparent reason after three years of blood, sweat, and tears um, and, and working at the job every single day, never missing a day, never being tardy, never having disciplinary, disciplinary action, then coming to um, the job on a random day and then being told I don't have a job anymore, which was someone else being in complete control of my life, you know? And then that day making a decision um, that I'll never allow that to happen again all while having this brand new Tahoe sitting out in my driveway, having this mortgage payment that's due, you know, at the end of the month and really being in a very dark place because it's just scary and lonely. And you're trying to figure out like, how am I going to make it through life? The reality is it's not that bad. Like it's not that serious, you know, but in that moment, in that microscope of that moment, this is literally the end of the world. Like it is literally like life, it feels, the pressure feels like life or death, you know? And so either you're going to figure out a path to getting out of that situation, you know, literally one foot in front of the next and you figure out the path, or you go into an even darker place, even darker depression, you know, now you don't wanna work. Now you're trying to figure out where you're gonna stay and where your next meal is going to come from and who knows that story ends bad for a lot of people you know so really that story was about people who are dealing with um the pressures of life feeling lost feeling even if you are working a job that's not paying you enough and your light bill is due or your you know your um your house is going into foreclosure because you can't make ends meet you know there's a lot of different circumstances that put people in a state of depression in a dark place where they don't know how they're going to figure it out. And I was there. And then, you know, one foot in front of the other, figuring out I want, like, entrepreneurship is the path that I want to go in. It's going to take me time. But if I'm willing to invest enough time, then positive things will come from that, you know. And so that story was kind of a snapshot of where I was, what I went through, and then my journey to kind of get my feet under me, build uh, build a system through my barbershop that ended up really laying the foundation for everything that I would do moving forward and ultimately put me in a position to decide if I want to go and buy a new Tahoe or not. You know? Absolutely. So, so yeah. hustle, adapt, yep. process. Processes. Yep. And... A lot of people want the end result, yep. but they don't. They want to fast forward to the end. <laughs> they want to fast forward to the end, but they don't want to endure the process. Yeah, and you know, it's an interesting, I, I picked up an interesting book from uh, from the airport I was in. Uh, where was I at? I was in uh, Missouri. I think I was in Missouri. Anyway, I was doing a presentation a couple weeks ago, and I was at the airport, and I bought this book. And this title of this book just like literally stopped me in my tracks. And the name of the book was The Messy Middle. Hmm. And it just resonated with me because it's like I feel like 75% of the conversations I have with entrepreneurs is a lot of them get off to a great start. And whether that's perceived greatness or whether that's true greatness, it's the energy and the excitement that comes with starting something new right. carries you at the beginning, right? It's like the first three months you're on this high, like you're on this wave. You put it out on social, it's new, it's fresh. People are responding to it and reacting to it. And then all of a sudden it starts to level out and the excitement starts to go away. And now it's like, I just need something new. Like I need something different. I need something. You made a comment. You said you keep things fresh. You know, that was what I learned like in the messy middle is like, you don't necessarily have to do anything different. You have to create the perception and you have to 
create the branding and the content that appears like you're doing something new, you know, which recreates the excitement, which their excitement gets you excited again, you know, and so you're kind of restarting your own engine like over and over and over again. And so that book kind of really spoke out to me because I think a lot of entrepreneurs can relate to that. And um, if you are into reading books, that's one to definitely check out, The Messy Middle. Yeah, The Messy Middle. So that is extremely important. And even for those who, whether they are entrepreneurs or they're enterprising, like within their current position, Mm -hmm. uh, is being able to look at, and I liken it to this. I would love to hear your thought on it. It it is nothing like, uh, because you're married. So it's nothing like um, your wife, or you looking at each other with fresh eyes, right? right? And so what? Some something. I'm headed to a wedding this weekend. Okay. Right? And so weddings and things like that. How long you been married? Uh, fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yeah. Nice. How about you? Eleven. Well, yeah. I've been together. We've been together eleven, going on ten. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we've been together seventeen, been married fifteen. Nice. And it's something about you know those moments where those fresh eyes, right? Mm-hmm. So the the thing that my goddad told me, he said. Make sure you compliment your wife every single morning before leaving the house, because if you don't, someone else will. Right. (laughs) Right. And so looking at your business with fresh eyes, you know, Mm -hmm. being able to however you spell relief after, you know, an 18, 20 hour day. Right. Right. And the the messy middle. Right. Yeah. And uh, having people that are close to you that can serve as those sounding boards. One hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. And I I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of that is self-awareness. Okay. You know, I think. You know, we were talking about your son, you know, like I'm wired where I need something different. Like the reason that building an agency made so much sense for my personality was because every day it is literally a new adventure. Every client has different things going on, new fires, new problems, new campaigns being ran. And if it literally feels like I'm starting a new business every single day. And until I found that, I got bored. Like, I literally got bored, you know, and I would have the conversation that, uh, when I worked um, in the barbershop that I ran or owned, you know, the conversation would always be, what do you have going on or, or what are you doing now? Or, you know, and it was almost like it was almost like they were frowning on the fact that I had so many irons in the fire. You know, and even I remember my dad having conversations with me about, you know, Robert, I can hear his voice like, Robert, you need to focus on one thing and just do that one thing. And it's a very common thing with, you know, our our parents and grandparents. Like they came from a culture where you put 100 percent of your energy into one thing and you develop that thing. And then once that thing is good, then you move to the next thing. And I just don't believe that, like especially now, you right. know. Uh, with technology and all the different things and I was just never I was never built that way I had a consistent pattern after college and I worked um, very a lot of like dead-end jobs so to speak or or jobs that I knew I wouldn't do for the rest of my life you know it was six months seven months and I was bored and then I would start missing days and then it'll be on to the next thing you know I watched this cycle happen and it wasn't because I necessarily liked or didn't like the job I just I would get bored and I would just want to do or see something different and I felt like I got jobs really easy back then um and I just I got tired of that process until I landed the job that I eventually ended up losing which paid me an incredible salary gave me a vehicle gave me an unbelievable insurance you know it was a career job that most people would retire from but even in that job there was days where I felt very uninterested, you know, making really, really good money, um, having six weeks of vacation, you know, over the course of a year. But still, I'm bored. I'm here. I'm doing my job. I'm performing the task that I'm supposed to do, but I'm bored. I don't, like, I don't love this. There's no passion in this for me. You know, so I think a lot of that beginning part is really about understanding who you are, how you're wired, and then moving forward from there. But I think people will skip that first step. Like, figure out yourself and then proceed to do the next step. Right, and I think in crafting a message or a story or storytelling or getting your business together, Yeah. because I have worked with many entrepreneurs who work for different businesses, and what I realize is that 
the character and the flow or the process of the business mm -hmm. uh, magnifies both the strengths and the weaknesses of his leader. Right? Yeah, 100 percent. So, and yep. so looking at that, man, uh, I was glad that I brought my son along tonight. Uh, and I hope that he's listening so that <laughs> he can see there's a, a viable future in, yeah. you know, A, becoming self-aware, yeah. uh, B, you know, being having the tenacity to pursue it, uh, to stay committed in the messy middle, right? right? Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, coming to that point of fulfillment of always rediscovering each day, taking on a new challenge. Yeah, and I think experiences do that for you. You know, you don't, it's hard, it's like working out or going on a diet. You know, it's, as you see progress, you know, and as you have proof of your efforts paying off, that's when you become kind of more committed and more motivated. Like my conversation with my son all the time is about how important practice is and how important honing your craft is. And so um, I one of our very first experiences of that was when he was about five years old and he first started playing video games. And I would literally purposely beat him bad like we would play you know basketball or football I would win 80 90 to 10 or you know like I would purposely beat him right and he would cry like sometimes he would cry like he would be very upset and then slowly that margin started to shrink started to shrink and then sometimes he would win every blue moon he would win right you know and so it was a really cool example for him that I can now always reflect on. Like, remember when I used to beat you, and then now I never win. You win all the time. Like, I, right. like I, sometimes uh, if I'm close, I'm happy, you know, and it's just a testament to practice, and it was a very good, you know, he's eight years old now, and he understands, and literally everything that he does when he's having trouble or he's just getting started, we can go back to that. Example, example of how you worked at it you play it every day your dad never plays i'm going off from memory you're honing your craft every day you're getting better a little bit better a little bit better and then next thing you know now you're you're much better than me you know so yeah, i think I, that applies across the board it does i think that's a solid solid example uh because i think especially me working in education um a lot of times we end up celebrating uh what's expected yeah you know and what's expected become is really the baseline <laughs> for beginning, right? Yeah. And then when people are they're not incentivized to go beyond what's the expectation. Right? Like actually dry like that what you just said to me represents a large part of our society and especially our culture. And right. it literally drives me crazy. And it's really the thing that um we're not taught. Like we're not taught um we're not talk initiative and like how to push ourselves beyond the status quo, you know? And I don't even think that's a conversation in a lot of other cultures, but amongst our culture, it's like, what is enough to get by, you know? And like, that is one thing that I try to push in every conversation to change. Like, I don't want to make you happy. Like I want to make you ecstatic. Like I want you to, to love what we do for you and the, the, what we bring for you. And I want to do things that you never expected to happen. You know, like that should be the process or the thought process across the board, you know, but when you become an entrepreneur and you're doing it for yourself, then I think that's kind of when the, the wires change a little bit. <laughs> you oh, know? yeah, I, t I totally agree. Um, and I want you, man, give a message to speak directly to them, Rob, the entrepreneurs that are currently locked into someone else's vision. Yeah. You know, and and they are uh, I tried to take it another level, man, in, in my personal life. And I wonder if there's some entrepreneurs. I, I believe there are where you sing success. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but now you want to get to that place of fulfillment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which and is two completely which different is two things. completely different things. Right. right. And so, man, they're feeling frustrated. They're getting ready to go in tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. and, and allow their gift to outshine what's happening in that that's needed for that environment. Talk right. to them, Rob. Well, I, I, you know what? I'll do even better. I'll give you a story. So I was laid off, let go, whatever you want to call it, from my job um, that I had worked for three years. And I was in this bad place. And then a friend introduced me to a friend who owned a barbershop. And she said, you can come in uh, and work on Saturday 
on Monday, I need you to go and go through the process of getting your license and starting school, but I'll go ahead and let you start. So this was going to be my first experience with entrepreneurship and generating money on my time, on my talent, um, in my life. And so I walked in, I had one pair of clippers, um, a, well, I had one pair of liners and one pair of clippers. And if you, you know, you go to a barber shop, you know, like every barber has like two or three of every <laughs> tool right. that they need. Right. So I walk in one pair of liners, one pair of clippers, a brush and a comb. And literally that's it. Like, I don't know what else I should bring. Cause this is literally spirit of moment. I'm surviving. Like I'm trying to do whatever I can do to survive. Right. And so long story short, I started at eight o'clock in the morning that day. And I worked from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock that night and never checked the clock one time. Like the, the thought of I'm ready to get off and go home never crossed my mind. And the thing that that day taught me and the, what, and the reason that day changed the course of my life was because at the end of that day, I had probably made just as much money as I have ever made in one day on any job. I did it on my time. I took my break when I wanted to. I decided to stop when I wanted to. There were still heads that could be cut. My back was hurting. You know, I was standing up. I hadn't stand, stood up for 12 hours straight, you know, and forever. Right. You know, so that day was just, it was the most fulfilled, the most fulfillment that I had seen ever in life. And the, the, reality that my gift and my ability to do something that I've been doing for years and that came very naturally to me was able to generate me just as much money as I had made from any job that I had ever worked at was like the most incredible feeling ever. And when I experienced that and when I tasted it that day, I knew that day I would never work for anybody again. Like this is the feeling that I've been searching for and you don't know it. Like you don't know it until you experience it. And that's a that happened for me in my first kind of true entrepreneurial um, journey. But sometimes that um, first taste isn't that good. You know, sometimes it's a struggle. You know, sometimes it's not like a natural kind of transition like that. And so I completely understand that. And I don't want to demonize like working a job because, you know, I have people that work for me. You know, I've worked for some great employers. So, you know, entrepreneurship, I don't think it's for everybody. You know, like there's definitely people that's more cut out to be employed and don't want the responsibility of being in control. And for them, success and even um, having a sense of fulfillment may come in a different way. You know, so again, that goes back, I think, to just being self-aware. Um, however, there's not very many feelings that really come close to that feeling of freedom and being able freedom. to decide, Absolutely. <laughs> you know, what you do what with you your do. time. Your time is the most valuable commodity, you know, so dictating, especially if you're a family person. I go to watch my son play basketball and football every single weekend. You know, I take my daughter and my son to school every single day. Right. You know, like I have advantages that I know a lot of individuals who work um, standard jobs don't really have, you know, and they have to um, make arrangements for those things. So those are just advantages. Like my, I know my dad would have given anything to be able to wake up with us, eat dinner with us, you know, put us to bed, like those type of things. And so um, technology just didn't allow for it back then. If it did, I'm sure he would have took advantage of it. But being in this era where entrepreneurship is literally at our fingertips, I would imagine if you have something that you love and something that you know you could do, but the thing stopping you is fear of not working for somebody, then you need to go ahead and, and, and at least give it a shot. If you know that you're not the type of individual that can run a company or that you're built for the pressures that come with entrepreneurship, because make no mistake about it, like entrepreneurship come with an incredible amount of pressure, Absolutely. you know, and pressure is different from stress. It's not stress. It's pressure and it's accountability. It's like being in a basketball game and your teammates giving you the ball to make the last shot. That's pressure. That's not stress. You've been playing this game your entire life. 
You've been practicing the same shots your entire life. It's not pressure. You can make the shot. You know you can make the shot. You might miss it occasionally, but you know you can knock the shot down. And I think that's the same when it comes to entrepreneurship. It's just checking your box every single day for the things that you you love anyway. You know, so um, if you're good with dealing with pressure and you're okay with that, then I think you should at least give it a, a shot and see how it plays out for you. So I always give my guests a challenge, right? I okay. always do. And sitting here, man, I have been inspired. So I have a couple of different books that I'm working on. Right? Okay. And books that you're writing. That I'm writing. You got right? it. Right. But I, I want to co write, and anybody that's listening that has a similar story, I would love to write a book called That Day. Okay. Because of listening to you, right? Yeah. So inspired by Robert Courtney, That Day. Got and it. if I had like, like 50 entrepreneurs that could talk to me, because everybody, every entrepreneur has a that day story. Yep. You know, yep. I remember it was yep. that a defi- day. A defining right? moment. That defining moment <laughs> yep. of that day. So uh, you heard it first here on the Drawing Board Podcast. And we're not going to rush the process. We're going to hustle, adapt, and process. We're going to make it happen, 100%. right? 100%. And, uh, yeah, so I would love it. Man, I could, I can almost, I'm visual, so I can see, like, you know, uh, all type of collateral and everything else and uh, merch that would come from hey, that I love day. it. Let's do it. And, you know, because look, <laughs> it would, it, the whole like entrepreneurship is, quote, unquote, the new sexy of what mm-hmm. people are doing to pursue their dreams, right? Correct. And uh, a 90-plus-year-old German man who lived next door to me when I, when I launched out into full entrepreneurship, and then he told me, he said, hey, come over here. Mm-hmm. He was cutting his grass, still 90-something years old. Okay. He said, I see you started a business. I said, yes. He said, well, let me tell you something. So I lean in for this. I'm, I'm you know, 90 plus years old, whatever right. you're going to say. Right, right. You don't get that age Wisdom. by accident, right? Yeah, so yeah. I lean in for whatever it is. And he said, the worst thing that can happen to you is that you learn something. Yep. And then he proceeded to finish <laughs> cutting his grass. <laughs> and I had to move on with my day. But it has stuck with me uh, from that point since 2011. Yeah. And so when I think about that day, man, could you imagine... Uh, the testimonies or the lives that would be transformed. Like, right. I would give anything at this point right now, man, to be able to take my young ones to school every day, right? Yeah. And, you know, everybody has, there's a process to those things. 100%. But, yeah, so yeah. that is, that was inspiring. So um, we're going to get it done. Yeah, I mean, even and even that little, you know, that little th- detail, that just happened two years ago. You know, I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years. So just to be able to be in a position where I can now say, you know what, I can take my kids to school every day. It's not going to affect me at all. You know, like that's another success story, you know, in, the, in a lot of different successes. But that's just like a small thing. And it it wasn't something that happened overnight. Like that was over time, you know. So I say that to just, you know, as a kind of a piggyback on you saying it just hasn't happened yet. But it'll absolutely happen. You know, it's just a process. And you got to be okay with going through the process. Right. Yeah. You said something in one of your videos that I thought was uh, interesting. And I don't correct me in the quote, but the, the spirit of it was uh, that time has taught you the sense of urgency. Oh, yeah. But it has also taught you patience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that's that my that, tribute to my dad. Yeah. Through my son's voice. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that was so dynamic yeah. of just the tension that time can create that, yes, there's an urgency. Yes, we talked about competitiveness and strategy and jumping out there, but also as a strategy, patience teaches you to wait. Yeah. 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 And it's the it's the play on the micro and the macro, right? Okay. So in the, in the big scheme of things, we have a lot of time. You know, like when you're looking at it from a grandiose viewpoint of um, journeys in life, Anything that you do that's worth having, any goals that's worth accomplishing typically take time. Um, Getting a degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctorate's degree, um, um, working out and achieving some type of physical stature, um, building a home, like anything – worth having you have to it's it's going to be a process it's going to be a time there may be comparable similar circumstances that can kind of give you a map for how long that process might take but you know that it's going to take a certain estimated amount of time and so for some reason when it comes to entrepreneurship I feel like we forget that because there hasn't been enough regular 
regular people, like everyday people, just started launching incredibly successful businesses. Like that just started happening in the last like ten years. Right. You know, on on a regular basis where we're seeing this. So there's no true blueprint that's really been established where we can say, okay, this is how we do it. And so everybody hones in on the few cases where they've watched somebody appear to become an oversight or overnight success. You know, and so that's the part that's tough. And then with social it's like we spend the majority of our time scrolling news feeds and admiring from afar people doing all these things and then they're com- we're comparing what we've done without never having a conversation or we're only basing it from what we see visually and so i think because of that people want to skip the part about being patient and realizing like this is going to take time on the f- flip side of that if you don't attack your passion with urgency right. you know and you don't understand that you need to maximize every minute of every day, especially when you're playing from an entrepreneurial position, that that dream will never happen. Like you'll never get to that destination of, of what you're trying to build, you know, and worst case scenario, especially if you have a family, you know, you have to understand that you're building a foundation for the next person that come to make this process easier. If my dad had done the entrepreneurial things that I'm doing as hard as I'm currently doing them, and then I came behind him with that same type of tenacity, tenacity and sense of urgency. I can't imagine, you know, where this ship would be at that point to no to no fault of his own. You know, but at the same time, it's like, you know, now we're carving out an opportunity for us to make decisions and have options as far as, you know, how we want to move from that point. So they definitely it's definitely a balance between understanding the importance of time and how we should uh, view it. Absolutely. So that leads us to branding for beginners, right? Yes. So before you jump out there, start your business, what we have to first figure out is, hey, am I passionate about it, right? Do Correct. I love this? Am I in love with this? Am I going to nurture it like a baby, a relationship that has to grow, Correct. right? Correct. And then now branding for beginners. Talk to me about this Thursday, this idea and I've, I've watched some of the episodes that you've had, which now I'm, I'm blending two different parts of your, uh, you know, your business. Right. But I watched, no, the, I watched the build episodes, man. <laughs> Thank totally you. inspired. I asked my son because I haven't figured it out yet. I said, man, I said, how did he get that video behind the video? <laughs> <laughs> you yep. know, so, I'll give you the, I'll give you the app before we leave. <laughs> OK, cool. I was like, oh, man, I got to figure that out. And yep. he was like, yeah, dad, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, you got me on this. <laughs> right. One. You got me. But so. Branding for Beginners, this Thursday, I'll be there. Uh, some of my favorite people that I've watched, you know, grow their business. Right. Uh, man, talk to me about it. Like, what is the goal? What's the mission behind it? Yeah, so Branding for Beginners started about three years ago. And the, the premise of Branding for Beginners was actually um, me trying to kill multiple birds in one stone. So when we first started, I didn't have the bandwidth to be able to provide information for all the people that was inquiring. And so I had this bright idea to bring them all to one place and then try to have the conversation with everybody at the same time. And then after that conversation, identify who was serious and who really wanted to move forward with services and who would contact me in the future. And so that was really the first branding for beginners. And then after that conversation, I feel like a lot of people came in on the fence and then I watched the energy grow. And then literally out of 13 people, 10 people followed up and wanted to have further conversations about how we could help them with their business. So that was incredible for me because it was like, you know, if you you like convergence, convergence. Yeah, you're big I'm on like, convergence. I'm like, oh, yeah, out of 13. <laughs> exactly. You know, go. that type Absolutely. of percentage rate. Is. Yes, so sir. in my mind, it was like we're spending all this time on social um, and social has been our primary tool for communication this, since I've been in existence, which is obviously why I transitioned into a social media agency. But we're spending time putting content out there and putting information out there. And we're having people come through that pipeline. But when we took that platform off of social media and made it an in-face event, it was like the success rate was through the roof. So at that point, it was like, OK, we need to make this a consistent pipeline for new opportunities and exposing our message for everybody. And so um, that's how Branding for Beginners was born. Um, the premise always being, I'm going to introduce you to individuals who practice these 
um, things every single day and are specialists in their field that you wouldn't normally be able to have conversations with because they're going to charge you, they're not accessible, um, they're busy, so on and so forth. So I'm going to create a, a, a scan, a planned schedule um, to put you in front of these type of individuals. So that's been the platform. Um, we're now going into our 11th one, and every one we try to focus on a different topic or a specific niche um, within the marketing arena. And so this particular one on Thursday at 7.30 is uh, the digital strategies um, version. And the idea behind this one is if you're struggling with any specific platform, the pl I brought in experts that will cover YouTube, Google, um, Messenger Automation, uh, Facebook, Instagram, email marketing, copywriting, content creation, and there will be breakout sessions for each of those individual topics for you to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people that are experts in those particular industries and uh, areas. And so I think this will be one of the, it, it won't be, it probably won't be the biggest branded for beginners, but it will probably be the most information packed branded for beginners and uh, probably more the more advanced branded for beginners than we've ever done before um, to date. And so if you have, if you have, uh, any questions or things that you're struggling with within any of those platforms, I encourage you to write those questions down, bring them with you. You'll be able to get an answer on the spot and hopefully leave with very practical insight that you can um, immediately start applying, you know, as you go on and continue to build your brand. Excellent. Excellent. So tell them, Rob, how can they get in touch with you? How can they go and register for uh, the conferet or the meeting Oh, it, what, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, we, it's an event. The event. We, we okay, call it yeah. an update, event. Update yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> we, we've, it's been called a workshop. It's been called a seminar. Okay. Um, and it's, it's all of those things. It's, it's a, a blended version of all these different things. And so we just like to call it a branding for beginners event, um, filled with very tactical strategies. If you're interested in attending the event, you can go on Eventbrite and register. Um, the event is free. General admission is free. Um, all you have to do is RSVP. Um, and then if you want a VIP version, which um, a book from Carlos Gill comes with that, the end of marketing, um, you can buy a VIP ticket. But in the event you forget to RSVP, we are we will RSVP you at the door. So that's at Trust. Um, it's downtown Detroit, 211 or 205 Congress. It's on the corner of Congress and Shelby, right across the street from Cobo Hall. And um, I think you will be very happy if you attend. It's a two-hour event. It starts at 7.30. It'll go to 9.30. The, the venue serves food. So if you're at work and you're hungry and you're worried about that, come on over. Um, we got you covered. And um, I look forward to meeting everyone. So you mean to tell me that if I want to learn branding from experts in, in Google, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Yes. That the event is free, it is, it and is if a I want the event. VIP experience, I could do that also for twenty five dollars. For twenty five dollars, <laughs> there so, so guarantee no doubt. Right, there is nobody offering these type of resources in the city of Detroit. Hundred percent guaranteed. Nowhere you'll find this type of resource. Right, because the value add for even just running a sponsored Facebook post. Right. You're going to spend more <laughs> if you want more than six days yeah. or five days or depending on the audience, number of people, yeah. you're spending twenty five dollars to be in the room with people who have done this for corporate international brands. One hundred percent. And you can look them up. You, know, right. you can go and you can Google all the people on our panel and you will see their body of work. Absolutely. You know? Including your own. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate so, that. Uh, we have now come to the conclusion of our show. Rob, thank you for being on. Thank you for having I, me. I wanted you to bring me one something from the unique collection. You know, yeah, I got I will give it up. to you Thursday. Yes, sir. All we'll right. We'll give it to you Thursday. So, like I always tell you all, listen, your future is not behind you. It is not before you. It is within you. I'm Andre Ebron, the host and the founder of the Drawing Board Podcast. I hope to see you out this Thursday because I will be in the place. And guess what? You're getting ready. Follow my social. I'm getting ready to put a video behind the video. Let's get it. <laughs> God bless you. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. <laughs>